<laughs> right. That's gonna work. Another beautiful country destroyed. First the NGL, now this place. Are there any good countries left in the world? The good news is, killing normal people is just gonna get boring. <laughs> and that might be the end of it. Fair enough. I mean... R.I.P. this nameless guy, he really knew how to dictate her. Hunter X, Hunter episode 93, date X with X Palm. Oh boy. He's got Nan. Okay, so it wasn't a total waste of a trip for them. Going straight for the brains. Oh no, he's got a taste for human flesh. Or Nen flesh. <laughs> it's terrible that these horrible beings that are gonna cause the human apocalypse say things like Nyaru Hodo. It's like a cute little baby got hold of a nuclear device. Somehow the contrast makes it extra unsettling. So he can get even stronger. That's good. They put on a hell of a show. Now their parents will be spared, maybe. Doubt this guy has Nen. Oh no, it's time for the human roast. <laughs> oh no! Oh no, what is happening? Why are you looking at me like that? Why are you looking at me? Why are you looking directly in the camera like that? Do you know who the real enemy is? Maybe this is good. <laughs> maybe... This will be good for humanity somehow. I, for one, embrace my ant overlord. I mean, as much of a villain as the ant king is, he can't be much worse than Diego. Excellent taste in theater aside. Which political philosopher did <laughs> the queen eat <laughs> to create this? A soft guiding hand from a wise king. <laughs> but yeah, gentle guiding hand will guide you into meat. No, not the ladies. Okay, thank God. Yeah, I feel like they won't even eat this one. Oh, yeah, she has the, the thing, the kite thing. What is this feeling? <laughs> Why are you looking at me again? Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> I've had the convenience of never having been in the position where a cow was begging me for its life, but I take your point. This is wild. I did not expect this from the king. Way more interesting already than just, you know, I see human, I kill human. One idea that's endlessly fascinating to me is how both individuals and society can gain lessons in what works and what makes things strong from nature itself. One of the common qualities you see in nature that enables a lot of the, the tenacity of living things to, to survive is not only avoiding fragility, but its opposite, antifragility. Nature does not like singular failure points. And in fact, by avoiding singular failure points and creating redundancy, often the redundant elements that, that survive a challenge end up contributing and strengthening the whole, as exhibited in natural selection. How does this relate to kings or power structures? I think there is something to the idea that the, the highest potential for a given society is a divine, benevolent, genius, wise ruler. <laughs> Yet over time, especially as societies get bigger and more complex, it seems like the world increasingly deviates from these grand godlike monarch figures, sort of spreading out the concentration of power a little bit. But why would it be that if the best thing is a divine king, that we have gravitated away from them? And I think the answer is, it's a singular point of failure. When it goes right, it goes really well. But it's actually really difficult to get it right. And the more complex things become, the harder it is to get right. Meanwhile, it's very easy to get it wrong. And the more concentrated the power is, the bigger the damage of getting it wrong. About his comparison to pigs and cows, obviously animals as food can be a very controversial topic. I think what's probably a lot less controversial is killing animals for pleasure. Of course there is hunting, but the aim of hunting is not killing animals for fun, even if people do enjoy the sport of it. Similarly, to declare yourself the, the smartest and therefore claim you have the right to follow your whims at whatever cost to other people or society or the world, especially if your shining feature is not any kind of wisdom or future thinking or virtue, but just raw physical power that allows you to dominate others, you're 
you're likely not that structurally different from somebody like Diego. No matter which elements of yourself you cherry pick to convince yourself you are above others. And looping back to my point about fragility, in real life, no matter how intelligent you are, you're going to do much more harm than good by trying to control every aspect of every person with an iron grip. The wise leaders follow the paths of nature, where instead of sci-fi, alien, or bug movie style having one brain or one being whose death will cause the death of all the others, you look at yourself as providing support and structure for a practically infinite number of individual nodes working at their individual maximum output to contribute to a, a very robust whole. Mm. This is our new HQ. Okay, it's our human meat factory. And maybe also our HQ? Oh yes, the real threat of this arc. Pam, yeah, Pam, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Pam, the woman I once said I relate to strongly. Bisky's just out. It sure reminds me a little bit of the... the... character from FLCL. The weird girl. Okay. Oh yeah, he promised. Why well, I broke a promise to Palm. Did she make these? She made these just to stab them? Don't uh, don't ask. That's a fat no for me. I think it was fine. <laughs> Go and just snap right out of it in the truck. Yeah, that's why I said don't agree. Go and just getting it from every angle. Hisoka, Palm. Oh, Gon's first date. A little boy. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Don't tell me which women I can and can't date. I'll make my own mistakes. Thank you very much. Yeah, this will probably end with me crying. <laughs> but it was worth it. And no one will ever convince me otherwise. Gon living signs dream from Freerun. Speaking of frost show comparisons. Speaking of which, where the hell are Leorio and Burpika? Well, I mean, I know the answer. Medical school and gang. But still, a phone call would be nice now and then. Yeah, you know, let's see where it goes. That's how I met your mother. I want a considerate boyfriend. We're <laughs> going, everything's just training. Training is training, going out is training. No, no, I think it's sweet. You know, he invited you to the things he loves. Pam is really flying off the handle here. <laughs> Damn, Gwen's handle is like a champ. Born to date. Building intrigue and suspense. That worked. That worked. Rare moment from, from Pom flying off the handle. Alright, now you're just lying. <laughs> now you're just lying. They're gaslighting. Jing probably also, I imagine, really good at gaslighting his romantic interests. <laughs> Pom, I hope you're ready to, like, take care of Gon's child without him. If Jing's theory of genetic power carries any water. I don't know if Gon knows. Well, he's a nature expert. He knows some stuff. I don't know if he's fully thinking about what is at the end of this road. But then again, it is Gon. And we've seen he's very capable at figuring things out on the fly. I mean, he figured out gaslighting in the first 30 seconds of his relationship. That's some high level stuff. Gon. Oh my <laughs> it's amazing how you gaslit so well. Let me find out Gon was, has plenty of experience on the island. What is going on on Whale Island, exactly? Yeah, I'm also curious now. What? Oh. I mean, I get it. It counts in a cute way. Damn, I thought the pain of Gon overshadowing Kalua was going to come from his physical power. <laughs> this cuts way deeper. What is Kalua, like some kind of virgin? Oh yeah, he said most of them. I'm not gonna bite on this one. Yeah, I'm not gonna- I'm not biting. I don't- yeah, I'm not biting. No way. Uh, just used to it. This is so easy. Uh, of course, uh... Oh, well, at least he's honest. I think you gotta get this weight off your chest and... This is one of those times for dialogue and honesty. Yo! Burying the lead there. Well, he is alive. This is definitely a good news first, bad news last situation. 
Yes. Okay, yeah, this is, that's a very positive way of looking at it. Yeah, that's wild. They could just be anywhere now. Anywhere. Could be in the gym with you. That's also a, a month's chance to prove himself wrong, that he can't act. And it's especially perfect timing given the fact that Gon can't defend himself against Nen. You again? I thought we were done with you. <laughs> I thought you like ran off into the sunset. I was wondering, I made a comment about like imagine them out in the world. Here we are, they're out in the world. What is it, like a centipede? A worm? This is an extension of the same thing he's critiquing himself for, in a sense. Not all that different from the queen, in a certain way. That's like X-Men. Horrific and hilarious. <laughs> Is she an ant too? Ant's already inf infiltrating the news? She's got ant fashion. Good. Finally. <laughs> Hiding things from Gon. Nah, he's gonna be stalking them. Kalua might see some things his eyes are not ready for. Well, I feel like Gon will be able to sense Kalua now. Damn, she cleans up! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we gotta keep this relationship a secret for a lot of reasons. I guess it's embarrassment, though. Did Gon just plan a great date? Is there anything this kid can't do on the fly? Yeah, you're a third wheel and weren't even invited. I think what needs protecting right now is Kalua's ego. Follow-up question. Where are they going? It's funny for me to think. Dating is something I just for whatever reason love talking about in shows and it comes up now and then. Basically all of Kaguya-sama was this. Somehow the person who gets it the most right in my opinion is Gon. I feel like this is the perfect energy to bring to a date. Maybe this is controversial because it'll sound selfish, but I think a lot of times good dates are things that really excite the person who's planning the date. It's one of those process oriented things where you try to get the underlying motivation right and trust that the circumstances will work themselves out the way they should. So if you share something with someone that you're really passionate about and love, it starts from a place of genuine expression and desire to share the thing. It allows you to bring your best qualities and if the other person doesn't like it, you can pick up those cues perhaps, but it's probably a good sign that if they're not enjoying the activity and also not enjoying who you are doing something you love, that it's probably not a great fit anyway. And putting myself on the flip side of that as a test, if I like someone, I would love to do the thing that they're passionate about. There's also a lot to be said way outside the scope of romance, just interactions in general, about creating gravity and controlling space in interactions. If you just steadfastly want to do something and are confident in the thing and are happy to do it one way or the other, anyone who doesn't match that same level of gravitational pull will be absorbed by and orbit your gravity, which maybe sounds unappealing in that phrasing, but actually can be a very enjoyable experience for somebody looking for structure and looking for strength and looking for admirable traits. This of course doesn't apply always, but I think in a lot of situations, we think the courtesy is to tread lightly, not be assertive, walk on your tiptoes trying to figure out exactly what the other person would like or wouldn't like, doubt any course of action or plan you might come up with for fear of mildly offending the other person, when really the biggest courtesy might just be to be steadfast in what you are and what you want to do. In a sense, that's putting the, the burden of the unknown Known, and the tension that arises from trying to both get what you want and accurately guess what the other person wants between two people simultaneously and allow them to be something like water flowing downhill path of least resistance and just enjoy the pure experience of it or interaction or whatever. Trying to guess all the variables creates ambiguity and ambiguity creates discomfort and discomfort creates avoidance. <laughs> Wow, they really covered the earth in a very, very short time span. Is it really though? That would be so embarrassing. 
I brought you to this magic tree. Now the two of them taught me nothing. Gon is not able to use his powers. That's true. Yeah, having no end would not stop him from fighting. He packed a chair too. He planned this really well. Uh, that also is. Nobody wants to sacrifice. Oh, that's that's legit. I know, I know what it is. I've, it's that that thing. It's that one. Yeah, yeah the, the rabbit, ribbit. Wait, didn't they give him Nen? I mean, didn't they introduce all of Nen to all of the ants through this thing? I think this is a situation where you don't have to fight. I can imagine there being an overcorrection for Kalua too. As I've made clear in this Kalua storyline, I don't think running itself is wrong. I think it's the being emotionally gripped so that you are compromised in your ability to understand the best choice and make the best choice. Kalua being gripped by paralysis, having the urge to flee, will likely mistake the fleeing as the problem, leading to an overcorrection where success to him is defined as not fleeing. When in fact, towards the aims he truly wants, like protecting Gon and living, fleeing might be the right decision. He could theoretically continue to lure this thing away Away, as far as possible from Gon without having to fight then risk his own life well honorable but again blinded good but compromised risks for Kalua aside I think the best possible outcome is not just surviving but beating this thing in defense of Gon helping him rethink a little bit about what his potential is what his capacity is to actually help discarding this absurd idea of ditching Gon and also I think sometimes with those kinds of ruminations where you're just clouded in, in a cycle of self-disdain and swinging wildly between extremes of avoiding and overacting to prove a point that doesn't matter if you manage to have some success sometimes that frees up some emotional space that is vital vital in clearing up your head just enough where the emotions lose a little bit of their grip and you can see things a little bit more clearly. And as things can spiral down very quickly, so too, thankfully, can they spiral upwards. A small victory can very quickly become a large victory, especially if there's a lot of great stuff, you know, a lot of really amazing potential trapped behind a single bottleneck. But I guess more importantly and impactful for this episode than Kahlua, Gon's dating life, which not only is a symptom of his best character traits and his underlying worldview, but also is validation for Jing, <laughs> whose genes turned out to be be just as strong as he hoped they would be, validating his entire theory of parenting, also making me wonder how many Gones are out there in the world currently.